What's up guys, welcome back to my channel. So this week I'm gonna show you a retouch on this client. So basically what she gets is pretty much like a colorful root into like a gray silvery mids and ends. So we're gonna be touching up her roots by doing a bleach and tone um, type of technique to lighten her completely solid because she likes to feel solid throughout her whole color. Um, so that is why we do a bleach and tone versus a highlight. So typically for a bleach and tone client, I don't like them waiting more than six to eight weeks because you can get some banding, especially if you're naturally like a darker level. I would say like if you're a level five and below, it's pretty safe to stay within that six to eight week range to retouch the root only because anything beyond that amount of regrowth, um, the heat from your scalp doesn't really travel and help process your roots that well. So sometimes you can get a band if it's anything longer because the scalp or the heat from your scalp um, doesn't allow the rest of the hair to lighten as light as it would closer to the scalp. So for this specific client, she does lighten, I would say not super quickly, it's more on the average level for this um, level of hair. I would say her natural level is about a level 4. It's pretty dark, but she does have a decent amount of gray in some areas. Um, so I'm starting kind of in the crown section of her head in the back first and this is because I feel like if I were to just start right on top sometimes the bottom doesn't process as fast so this is kind of giving um, the bottom portion kind of like a head start so the back kind of processes all the same and I find that this creates a really even lift so I'm able to rinse out the whole back all at the same time and I don't have any bands underneath um, below the head near the nape if the top part of the back is ready and I find that I do this on a lot of clients who just lift I would say pretty average for this level of hair um, but if a client lifted very fast and she lifted really well and had really fine hair or was even like a level like lighter like I would say a level six and above then I would start at the top but since this client specifically she's like about a level four naturally and she doesn't particularly lift quickly this is where I would start um, pretty much on the midsection of the back of the head or where you saw I started at her crown and then work my way towards the bottom towards the nape and then go back up and hit the rest of the top of the back section of her head So for my lightener, I'm using the Pulp Riot Cream Bleach and there's various reasons why I choose this type of lightener over others. Um, one of them being that the cream bleach was formulated to be very gentle on the scalp, especially for clients who get um, bleach and tones like this every six to eight weeks. You wanna use something that's very gentle on the scalp that will also be very powerful to lift their hair evenly. Um, and I feel like the cream bleach also comes in like a very thick creamy consistency i particularly like to mix mine one to one and a half with the pulp riot developer and i normally will use 20 volume um, on a standard client if a client had like really coarse thicker hair i might use 25 volume um, but i really don't go beyond that it's usually within the 20 volume to 25 volume range and always mixing that one to one and a half with the developer So another reason why I really like this bleach too is because wherever you put it, it really does stay put. Um, I feel like it never really expands. I never have to worry about it like uh, just swelling or anything like that. So I'm safe and um, for sure that it will just stay put and lift only where I place it. And that's really crucial whenever you're doing like a bleach and tone because you really don't want that lightener to expand or overlap onto the previous blonde. So now you can see as I've finished the bottom towards the nape, I've moved on to finishing up that top part of the head. And as I'm doing this, you can see that my sections are super thin. Like I would say the sections that I'm sectioning are thin enough to be see-through. And I'm being very meticulous with this because it is a bleach and tone and she is naturally so 
dark compared to how light we're about to be lifting her so you want to be careful and you want to be extra meticulous when doing this type of application um, another thing to note is that when i do my application i will section the hair first and then hold the hair with tension and then bring up the rest after i place the product on the first half flip it up and then apply the rest of the product on the other half while holding it with tension still this i find is a huge game changer when you section the pe this hair first and hold it with tension and then you're easy it's easy to move the hair up and go through each part a little bit faster rather than place the product and then section after i find that when i do apply the product first and then section after sometimes it can get a little messy because sometimes when you section the hair after you've already applied the bleach the bleach can like run down the hair and cause um, a little of overlapping so it's really easy and makes the sectioning very clear clean and clear um, when you section it first and then apply product and it also is very helpful to hold with tension because I'm able to really make sure that I'm not overlapping and I'm placing the perfect amount of product to where is necessary on the head and after I do this whole application I do kind of cross check a little bit just to make sure that nothing is overlapping um, because the cream bleach doesn't expand I'm pretty confident that it's not going to overlap and over process the blonde parts of her hair so that is another reason why I'm not using cotton sometimes in the past I would use cotton if a client's hair is um, pretty fragile but I'm pretty confident that this cream bleach does stay put wherever you put it as long as you put it and apply it properly and very meticulously i feel like it should not over process or overlap onto any previously lightened ends so now as i'm moving towards the front i do line my sections first so you can see i lined the uh, where the front and the back meet and now I'm going in and doing the top portion of her head and when I do the top portion of her head I will do from temple to temple I usually start wherever they part their hair first and then work my way in and I apply it the same way I would apply in the back so again I pre-section the piece that I'm going to apply the product onto hold with tension apply the product and then move the section over to apply product on the other side of the root and I continue this as I'm taking very thin paper sec paper thin sections so that I get a really even application and everything is super clean. So as I'm doing the top part, I will reach and hit the top section to the temple and then move on back to the middle or wherever I started and finish off to the other side of the other temple of the head before moving on to the sides. I find that when you finish the whole top section, you're able to rinse it out and get a really even lift opposed to if I were to do like one half of the head first all the way to the ear. Um, versus doing um, the whole top part. I find that it just makes it a lot more even and it gives it time to just lift at the same time opposed to doing one half and then the other half. And then lastly, I do want to mention that whenever I finish the back section of the head, um, before I begin this front portion, I do mix up a fresh new bowl because this cream bleach does kind of um, get a little puffy as more oxygen gets into the lightener. So I feel like when it gets like that, it gets kind of like airy and uh, the strength of the lightener actually loses its strength. So it, I always like to use a fresh new bowl when moving on to another section. And honestly, when you mix a fresh new bowl, it just saves you a lot of time because you're not there just like sitting as you're waiting for the old lightener to process um, because the fresh lightener will process a lot quicker than lightener that's been sitting out. So once this application is done, I usually will open up like a shower cap and just place it over her head to prevent the lightener from completely drying out. And then I usually just let the roots process all the way to like a level 10 um, before rinsing everything out. 
So after I rinse out her lightener, I did pre-tone her with the rabbit toner. So I liked using the rabbit toners for any of my silvers over the semi-colors. So for her root formula, and I kind of just brushed it through the mids and ends, I used silver, violet, and moonstone. And this creates this beautiful silver color. And I just wanted to pre-tone her because since we're going to be doing a colorful root, I just wanted to put color like semi-permanent on the root part and leave the ends nice and gray like they are now. So now I'm going in with the blue formulation that we're going to be putting on her root. So I went ahead and mixed up a formulation of Decoy, Tragic, and Nightfall. This is going to create a really pretty teal blue for her. And I'm just doing a root since she wants the ends to stay silver. And I find that this is going to create a really soft blend into the lighter color because I'm just lightly brushing over and taking very thin sections and applying this root area. And definitely I could have created this gray using the semi colors, but I prefer my silvers with the rabbit toners. I don't know why, I just feel like I get a better silver when using the silver violet moonstone combination versus if I were to try to mix a semi permanent that looked very similar to this. And then once I was done applying her root area, I did leave this on for about like 25 to 30 minutes and then of course rinsed it with some ice cold water um, before I was all done. Alrighty guys, so here is the finished look and obviously when this fades out this is going to fade out a little bit on the greenish side for her root since it is more of like a bluish teal but the ends of her hair are going to stay relatively like an ashy blonde to silver if she is to maintain it with like a purple shampoo but I absolutely love this color combo and I feel like it really brought out the color in her eyes and she was just so obsessed so if I were to recreate this silver on using like a semi formulation, I might have maybe used like mercury, smoke, and some lava. Maybe added in some lilac depending on how yellow her mids and ends were, but you definitely could have created the gray that I created on the mids and ends with the semi and applied it with the semi root as well. It's really up to you, but I just always feel like for me, my personal pre preference is that my silvers look better when I use the rapid toner, so that is why I used them. But you guys can do whatever you want to create your silver colors. Alrighty guys, that is it for this week's episode. Thank you guys so much for watching and tuning in. And as always, I will talk to you guys next week.